my God is alive and well. And since my God is alive and well, we too are alive and well. And we want to show it tonight. I'm glad that we're in God's house. Those of you who are watching by live stream, we are so glad you're watching with us tonight. I want you to act as though you're in church. Once you get your Bibles out, go along there with us. Praise the Lord as we read. Sing the Lord, sing with the Lord as we sing. And I would ask you now that we're all going to stand. And I want those of you at home to stand in honor to God's word. We're going to pray and open this service. And I want you to be ready and put everything you've got into it tonight. Father, we thank you that in the middle of the week, when there is chaos all around, we can stop, get off of this merry-go-round, get in our houses, get our Bibles out, settle back, and force ourselves by saying, so get ready to receive the word of God. And that we're going to hear, we're going to listen, we're going to get the word. The word is going to make us better because the word is going to prepare us for tomorrow, for the next few moments, whatever it may be. The word is going to prepare us. So God, we commit to you tonight, wanting you to, you to do it your way and let us receive it. Now I pray God that everyone, those at home, those wherever they are, that God, we will join in together and sing together and give you honor and praise, and it will cause you to be proud because we're giving it from our hearts. Thank you for it. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. We're going to sing, In the Name of Jesus. And I thought this was an appropriate song. It says, In the Name of Jesus, demons or viruses have to flee. Amen. In the Name of Jesus. It says, When we stand, who can stand against us? And when we stand, and in the name of Jesus... We have the victory. Amen. So let's sing in the name of Jesus. <clears throat>
Amen. And tis so sweet to trust in our sweet Jesus. Amen. Yes. I want us to all go to prayer tonight, and I want us to pray for the needs that we have. There are needs present here in this building tonight. We have a prayer list and a prayer chain that we want to lift up all of these needs to God. I know those of you who are watching, you have needs too. I've talked to some of you today, and you've told me some of the tragedies in your lives and your families. We want to pray for them. We want to pray for our country, our nation, the world. God's people need to bind together and pray in faith for this world. Pray for this virus, for God to stop it. Never, never stop praying that. God can. God said he will. If his people can pray and reach out and touch the hem of his garment, and I want us to be guilty of that very thing, reaching out and praying and believing in faith for God to do great and mighty things. So lift up your needs tonight, and let's all pray together for these needs. Father, we thank you for giving us the privilege of bringing forth your word one more time. God, we don't know what tomorrow holds. But I'll say it again, we know who holds tomorrow. I know who holds my hand, and I know in whom's hand my life 
depends. God, I just pray for you to direct us in all of our ways and give us strength and courage to walk the path that you put before us and to not be ashamed. I pray, God, for every need tonight, the needs that are here in this building, the needs, God, of those watching live stream, the needs on our prayer chain and prayer list. God, we lift up all of those in the hospitals, those in the nursing homes, those in their homes. I pray, God, for your healing touch to be upon them, to minister to whatever need they may have right now, whatever we can think of at this moment, people that we will pray and believe. God, I pray for Ware County, for your hand of protection to continue to be upon us. I pray for our state, for our nation, and for the world. I ask you, God, to stop this virus, to save your people. God, I do believe that in this time of turmoil, I do believe that your people are turning to you. I do. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and turn, and God, I believe this nation is trying to turn. And I pray that we will fulfill that verse. And that as we do, God, that you will then fulfill your part of the promise. And you will heal our land. And make it well. Until then, let us persevere in faith, trusting and believing the word of God. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for each breath that we take. For we know not which will be our last. But we trust you with that, and we believe in you. Lord, bless us tonight now as we open the word. Let it speak to our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Tonight, as we look at God's Word, if, if I could pick a title for it, I'd say Fear Not, which we've talked about so much and so many times during the things that we're going through right now, that God's people are to trust and fear not, even though that's humanly impossible. So we know, not, we know that God's not talking to us as humans when He says fear not. There's a whole lot more to it than just the flesh. This body is made up of flesh and spirit and soul. So we're going to look at some verses tonight and try to understand more about what God is saying. I want you to turn to the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. Lamentations, chapter 3. It might take you a few seconds to find that one. It's not one that, oh, I don't think that's one of the favorite verses or books of the Bible to preach out of, so we don't turn there a whole lot. So turn to Lamentations. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations is right there. Lamentations chapter 3. I want to look at one, one verse. <clears throat> verse 57. Lamentations three fifty-seven. Those of you that are at home, get your pencil and paper out. I'm going to give you something nice you can write down, something you can talk about, something you can look at, something you can read every day. Let's look at Lamentations chapter 3, verse 57. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee, and thou saidest, Fear not. Father, thank you. Thank you for a word that is a calming word. It is a reassuring word. It is a comforting word. It is a peaceful word. It is a word that can stop anxiety. And according to your word, 
is a word that can calm fear. So tonight, help me to say it plainly, God. Just speak through me. And let your people hear and understand. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. He says, thou, thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee, and you said, fear not. God drew near in the time when this book was written. Some say Jeremiah wrote the book, but nevertheless, he said, I prayed, and you drew near, and when you drew near to me, I heard you say to me, fear not. Those words are found throughout God's word. And what we have to understand is I'm as much a human as you are. I bleed just like you do. I hurt just like you do. I worry just like you do. I have fears just like you do. That is a part of our human makeup. God is not speaking to that part of us. God is speaking to our spirit. And what we need to understand is this is God's spirit speaking directly to our spirit. For God knows that our spirit and our heart is what should control us. It controls everybody. Sinners are controlled by their heart. An evil soul, an evil heart produces evil things. A good soul, a good heart produces good things. So everybody is controlled by the heart. So God looks at the source, and he says, I know that the way that I made you, you're going to have fear. That's common. That's natural. But he said, I want to talk to you. As, as God would say to us, I want to just sit down for a few moments and get in the lounge chair, and I want to talk to you face to face, man to man, and try to help you understand something. First, he says, I, I want to address your spirit. Now, I know in every Christian there's a good spirit. has to be because we're Christians. That spirit belongs to God. And he said, when things happen in the world, whatever they are, when things happen, and we're not talking about coronavirus, that's part of it. But there are so many evil things going on, so many bad things going on because of the results of the virus. People are worrying about money. They're worrying about jobs. They're worrying about family. Needless, that, that is true. It's there. Those things are real. So we're going to talk about the entire part of life tonight. And Jesus said that I know when all these things are going on you, going on around, you're going to hear these things. You're going to experience these things. And he said as time goes by, the, 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 um, the verdict or the anticipation, the word gets worse and worse and worse. Someone once said that when you, on certain diseases, when you have them and you go in the hospital, that that disease has got to get worse before it can get better. You've got to get sicker before you can get well. And we don't like those words, but when you think about it, diseases have to run their course, and until they've run that course, you're going to get sicker and sicker and sicker, and at some point, the medication is going to kick in, and you're going to turn over and begin to get better by better by better by every day. I read a story today of one man who had been on the vent, and it was very bad, uh, very dangerous. He had the virus, and he was 80% 80% dependent upon a vent. And they said the next day it dropped to 60. The next day it dropped to 30. And they said, praise God, he's on the way to recovery. So you got to go so far down, and then you got to turn around and come back. And that's the way it is in life. No matter what we're facing, whatever that thing is, it's got to run its course. And we don't know where we are in that. We don't know where we are in the virus. We don't know where we are in, in the economy. We don't know any of that stuff. We're just drifting, as it were, on a ship out on the sea, and the wind's pushing us back and forth. We don't know where we're going. We don't even know where we've come from. We don't know whether the wind will blow tomorrow and push us one way or push us. We don't have any idea. All we know we can do right now is sit back in the boat and let this thing take its course. So God says when you're doing that and you look all around and you see all these things and you hear all these things, they bring fear to us as human beings. They cause us to think 
They cause us to doubt. They cause us to worry. So he said, now what I want to do is I want to speak to your spirit. Let's forget the things around us. Let's forget everything outside these walls. Those of you that's watching, forget everything outside your house. Cut the TV off. Cut the radio off. Throw the magazines down. Burn the paper. And just for a moment, let Jesus talk to us. So it gets quiet. And then he says, okay. Now listen, I want your spirit to be at ease. He said, there was a time when I was in the garden, and he said, I was facing the cross. He said, I knew what my purpose on this earth was. I knew why my father sent me. I know my father loves me. I know my father doesn't want me to suffer. I understand all that. But he said, you know what? He said, I got to thinking about it. And I realized that I love my people so much that I'm willing to die for them. I'm willing to die for them. It's not what I choose. It's not the way I want to go. But I realize just how much I love my people. So he said, with that in mind, I said, Father, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. He said, tonight, all of you that's in the sound of my voice, he said, I'm asking you a question. How much do you love your people? Who are your people? My people are everyone that God has put around me for me to shepherd. I don't know who they all are. I don't know who all is watching this tonight. Or who will watch it in the days to come. I don't know that. But everyone that God has placed. Within me. Near me. In the sound of my voice. Then they become my people. And the question is. Am I willing to die for them? Are you willing to die physically, first of all, he said. Ask yourself this question. You parents that's watching tonight, are you willing to die physically for your children? Would you take the bullet for your child? Would you jump in front of them to protect them? You husbands, would you take the bullet for your wife? Would you jump in front of them? Would you do whatever is necessary? And he says, the answer to that is anyone who loves, the answer to that is yes, I will. Yes, I would. It's hypothetical. We understand that. But right now, in reality, we'd say, yes, we would. We don't know what we would really do until the time came. Would we freeze up and not be able to do it? Or would we really do it? How many parents have stood by their bed and said, God, with their child laying there dying, God, do, take me, don't take them, put this on me, let them live, and I'm willing to die. When you love, that's what you're willing to say. But he says, now you got to go farther than that, son. Would you be willing to expand that same feeling for all the people that I place in your protection? So he's saying, would you take the bullet for me? Would you take the bullet for her? And we had to think for a moment. He said, because the whole world was my people. But yours is limited. So keep it personal. Keep it close to home, he said. And let's just talk about family. And we certainly would say, yes, I would. He said, well, that time came for me. And there was turmoil all around me. They had laughed at me. They had scoffed at me. They beat me to within an inch of my life. And then I had to think, as God, I looked forward and I saw all of those events. And those events became real. And I saw the suffering that I would have to go through. And he said, at that moment, 
Satan came to me. And Satan showed me the worst, very worst possible scenario for the next few days. I saw the hurt. I saw the pain. I saw the rejection. I saw my disciples run. I stood alone in the world. The world that was coming against me was wrong. Their thoughts were wrong. Their ideas were wrong. I was right. But they were going to prevail because they had the people and the government behind them. At that moment when Satan showed me that, as a human, I was flooded with thoughts. And I bowed on my knees. And I cried and I prayed to my father. And I said, Father, is there another way? Can it be done another way? He said, those were my moments where I was impacted the most by the words of Satan and the pictures he was showing me. And my mind was running. And he said, that is the same position that you're in now. Satan is showing you the pictures of a future. He's bringing fear and doubt to your mind. And right now you're in the same state that I was in. And I was thinking. And I cried out, Father, is there another way? And he said, today, you're doing the same thing, son. You're asking me why. You're asking me questions that cannot be answered. The same as I was asking my father. And he said, I heard those words come out of my mouth. And I thought. And he said, it's time that you, the church, hear what you're saying. It's time that you think about the words coming out of your mouth. It is time that you think about whether or not you believe what your purpose for being here really is. A light to the world. And he said, in that moment in mine, I thought and then I said, Father, I know you have a plan. I know you're in charge. I know your will is the best. I know your way is the best. I understand that. So, Lord, thy will be done. Father, whatever you want, I am compelled by the Spirit of God to go forth into the unknown, trusting you, holding on, and letting my light shine as far as Calvary. And he said, I'm, I want you to know tonight, I'm telling you, fear not in your spirit. My spirit was troubled. But then when I understood and I realized what was being said, I then said, Father, thy will be done because my spirit all of a sudden was at ease. It was at rest. It was no more turmoil. It was no more, nothing was wrong. And I said, God, I understand now. Thy will be done. I'm at peace with it. Fear not. And he says, I'm speaking to you as a church. I'm speaking to you as an individual tonight. Fear not. Let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Fear not. Let your hearts be not troubled. That is what God is saying to me and God is saying to you. Paul had suffered tremendously at the hands of the world. 
He had been told to be quiet. They had tried to shut him up. They did everything in their power to destroy him and his voice. They beat him. They stoned him. You name it, it was done. And Paul now in his missionary journey is coming near the end of his life. He is preaching as hard as he can. He's preaching as fast as he can. And his friends come to him. And they say, Paul, now it's time we go here. And Paul says, no, we're not going there. We're going over here. And they said, Paul, you can't go over here. Because over there is certain death. You can't go there. We can go here. We can be safe. We can be in our little place. We can preach the gospel. People are going to hear it. And everything's going to be good. So let's go over here. And Paul said, no, we can't do that. I got to go over here. And they said, we can't do that. And Paul said, I can do that. You see, you're looking at things on the outside. You're listening to what people are saying. They're saying, I come over here, they're going to kill me. So you're saying, let's go over here where it's safe. You're looking outwardly. And as human beings, you care for me, you love me, and I understand that. But he said, I can no longer listen to what you're saying. I have to listen to what God is saying. And I've prayed about this thing. And the Spirit said to me, you got to go over here. So it constraineth me. It pushes me. It forces me. I don't have a choice in the matter because I'm God's child. And that wind is blowing my boat. And i got to go over here. I do not fear me. And I do not fear death. I do not fear what they say because if God compels me, if God constrains me, if God pushes me, if God leads me, I am safe in the arms of God. So I'm saying tonight, simply to you, thy will be done, God, not the will of man. You see? Jesus is trying to speak to our souls. And when he can get our attention, and when he can shut our ears so we can't hear the world, and we can hear God, and hear God say, fear not, then we will stop, and then we will say, thy will be done. Thy will be done. God is near us, church. That's a fact. It's a fact. It's not just words printed in the Bible. Some people say when everything's going good in their life, boy, God is good to me. God's really near. God has really blessed us. You know, when everything is, is right, when we're being protected, when God's blessings are flowing, whenever God's mercy is being poured out, when the Spirit is there, we say, boy, I'm telling you, God's really near to us today. But then when Bad news comes and sickness comes and viruses come and disease comes and the government comes and the Gentiles of the world, the sinners come and they attack us. We say, where is God? Oh, oh my God, you know, where is God? Job kept saying, if God would just appear, if he'd just, if he'd just come, and if God would just sit down next to me, I believe me and God could talk this thing out and we could figure out what's going on in my life if he'd just come and be near me. And God was saying, I'm near you. I've always been here. And today, God is telling all of his children, I'm here. Fear not. I face my time. I faced it like a child of God. I walked to Calvary. I suffered, but I walked. I also died. But I faced it with the faith of God, knowing that God was holding my hand. Fear not, he said to me, and I did not fear. And he said, God is saying the same thing to me and you today. He's always here. It does not depend on whether God blesses us through this virus. It does not depend on whether God protects us through this virus. It does not depend on whether or not we live or die during this virus. God is here. God is with us. He'll never leave us. He'll never walk away from us. God is always here. My church is not here. It's not fun echoing my voice back and forth and hearing it coming back to me. But I know that I know that God is here. It does not depend on the number of people that we have in this building. It is upon the fact of whether or not God is here. And I know that God is here. And I know that God's blessing. And I know when I leave here, God will go with me there. I'm safe because I am sheltered in the arms of God. I believe that with all my heart. 
And it's because of God and God's promises in this book that we are overcom overcomers, that we are conquerors, that we are winners. I'm not a loser. You're not a loser. Church, you sitting there at home, you're not losers. You're winners through Christ. And winning does not depend on the final score of this earth. It depends on whether or not you're right with God. If your soul is right with God, you'll say, I fear not because I rest in the arms of God. Then it doesn't matter whether we live or whether we die. It doesn't matter whether we get the virus or whether we don't. Nothing matters other than the fact that all is right with me and God. And if I go down the next second, I'll wake up in heaven. That's all that matters. We're overcomers. That doesn't mean that we're overcomers and the virus won't come. It means that our spirits are overcomers through Jesus Christ, and I will glorify him, and I will praise him, and I will lift him up, and I will sing his praises no matter where and no matter what I go through because we're overcomers in Jesus Christ. You see, faith comes to those people who are comforted. I want you to think about this for a moment. Faith comes to those people who are comforted. It doesn't mean that when God picks us up and holds us in, our arm, in his arms and he says, everything's going to be all right. I'm going to protect you from this thing that's going on in the world. Everything's going to be fine. That's not comforted. Comforted is someone who has been through a battle and won. Therefore, that person is comforted in knowing that he can't lose with God. That is faith. And that person who is comforted because he has struggled and overcome through the power of God. That person who has faith is one who has fought the battle, faced the enemy with God by his side, feared not, walked where no other man dared walk, and came back because Jesus Christ will not disappoint his children that person has faith. That one who's never stepped out of the boat can't have faith. It's impossible. We face every situation in our life, and no matter how hard, no matter how, how bad, no matter what the con 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 consequences are, we face it with the faith that God has done it in the past, and he'll do it today, and he'll do it tomorrow. That is what faith is. Faith comes to those people who are victorious. Victorious. We fought the battle. We faced the enemy. They came. We went. And we came home with the spoils. That is what faith is to those people who are victorious. Prayer, then we know what faith is. Prayer, then, are the words of a victorious person. A loser cannot pray the prayer of faith. They don't know how. The victors, those who have fought battles, those who have won, can pray a prayer of faith because they understand where it came from and they know that God will do it again and again and again. So every time they get in trouble, they fall on knees and they pray and they're praying because they know their words are going to be upheld by God, that God's going to hear, that God's going to come forth. I prayed, God heard, and he said, fear not. And every time that we face a battle as Christians, we just recall past victories. And since we know we won those victories through God, we know that God will bring another victory here. So we pray and we ask him to do it. Losers can't do that. Losers run and hide. Loser, losers try to do what the world's doing. Losers try to be protected by the things of the world. It can't happen because the things of the world are always going to be there for good people and bad people. But good people know how to pray and know that their God's going to be with them. So in their spirit, rest easy because if I choose to take you home, you'll be in heaven immediately. See, that's what, faith, that's what faith is, and only those people who have won those battles cannot. When God says, fear not, that is his mercy. God's mercy. So prayer produces mercy. Faith brings victories. Victories bring prayer. Prayer brings mercy. 
And mercy, whenever it's applied to our lives, we have to understand that mercy brings praise. When we think about what God's done for us, blessed be the name of the Lord. When we think about where God's brought us from, those of you sitting here tonight, if we had time, we could all testify of something great that's happened in our lives that God brought us through. A loved one that something happened that God brought them through. Some of us will even be able to say here tonight, I shouldn't even be here. Were it not for the grace of God. Some of you watching tonight, you can say the same thing. You could stand up right there and say, I want to tell you about what God did for me. There was no way it could happen, but it happened through God. And I give him all praise and glory. Why? Because we fought battles and we won. And those battles that we won taught us how to pray. And prayer brought forth mercy. And mercy brought forth praise. We think about God's mercy that he spared us. Jesus Christ died on the cross for me and you when he had no, we had no means to ask him whatsoever. He did it anyway. Jesus loves us unconditional. Mercy. And mercy then brings that praise. And praise is the very thing that enriches our spiritual life. Fear not. God's spirit speaking to our spirit. God is talking about our spiritual life. Fear not. So after we pray and that mercy comes and that mercy brings praise, then praise is the thing that enriches our spiritual life. As we begin to praise God for his wonderful love, for his wonderful mercy, for his wonderful protection, for his wonderful healing, for God and all that he is, that praise begins to well up within us. And when it does, we see less of the world and our spirit gets stronger, stronger, and stronger. And we walk away feeling good, good, knowing that the spirit of God has dwelt with us. And there's just not even motorcycles running up and down all over our body. That's the spirit of God. And it's good. And we walk in there and we're refreshed. And our spirit is strong. And we can walk it into that world and say it doesn't matter whether it's a lion's did, whether it's, whether it's a fiery furnace, whether it's a coronavirus it doesn't matter i go in the name of jesus christ i go in the spirit of god he walks with me he talks with me he holds my hand he's everywhere i am my god is so good and i tell you what i can't go under for going over blessed be the name of the lord Amen. that's our spiritual victory that's what god is talking to us about the spirit in our lives and we've got to learn to glorify him god's spirit simply says fear not and when we listen to God, when we hear God say that tonight, those words, fear not, silence us. There's not one word been spoken in this building tonight about the coronavirus except by me. Isn't that a wonderful thing? For these past few minutes, we've been away from it, haven't we? Those of you that's there at home, if you had your TV cut off and the radio shut down and the magazine, the newspaper's gone, what a thing said, you've been listening to me. That's what God wants. He wants us to tune the world out and listen to him. And he will speak hope and life into us where the world is speaking despair and doom and agony and death. As all in whom we choose to hear. His spirit, it calms our spirits. We take that deep breath, we put the earplugs in and we go <sighs> it brings a calm that nothing in this world can bring. It brings the ease on us. No more squeaky wheels. It's just an ease. Everything just seems to be working good all of a sudden, you know. There's no discouragement. There's no there's, it, there's no nothing going on. It just everything's old, real good by the Spirit. Everything, oh, it, it's just different, and it quiets us. It's a calm, peaceful place, and it quiets our spirits. And then we hear God say, "Fear not." Joy comes in the morning. And mourning 
is just right around the corner. And we have to think about that. Because you see, if, if somehow if, if our prayers through a victorious life can produce mercy, which is God's gift. Then when we hear God's voice, really, and he says, fear not. At that moment, those words are God's grace. So we're being given God's mercy and God's grace. Every time we hear those words in our spirit, I encourage every one of us tonight, take the time to get along and hear God's voice. He wants us to be victorious over the situations we're going through in our lives. And we will be if we do it his way. If we do it his way and we, then we're going to learn to pray we're going to learn to trust God. We're going to learn to praise God. We're going to receive his mercy. We're going to receive his grace. And when we do that, our spirit will be revived. And our spirit life will come back to where God wants it to be. And when God's people are doing what God says, great things are going to happen. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He's always near us. Everything's going to be okay. Doesn't mean the world is going to all live. Doesn't mean that we're not going to have confusion out here. But in here is peace. And that is what enabled me to trust God. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you, God, for everything you've done. I just ask you, Lord, to help every one of us to learn how to hear your voice. You say that everything we've been through, you've already been through. You've experienced it, God, when you lived on this earth. Fear, doubt, worry, everything we go through, you said you experienced, but you overcame it. Now, God, you tell us we can too, and you want to teach us how. So teach us how to cut off all these things and be able to sit down and hear your word, study your word, read your word. Let your word speak to us. Let your spirit speak to our spirit and let us hear you say, fear not, and let us trust you because that is the way of hope. That is the way, God, that our light shall, our light shall shine, shine upon this earth. God, help us. To let our lights be bright. There is a world around us that needs Jesus Christ. Help us to be at peace and share what we know in you. God, I love you. I love all my people, miss all my people, and look forward to the day very soon that we're back together again. Until then, keep us safe. Keep our minds sharp. And keep our hearts in love with you. In Jesus' name we pray.